Content platforms treat the content on your website or app like data. In the beginning, we had HTML websites where content was embedded directly in the code, but that was never going to scale well. The next generation of websites used a content management system, or CMS, where content is stored in a database then injected into an HTML template. This works great until you decide you want to migrate your app into a fancy new JavaScript framework. Or maybe you want to display the same content on iOS, Palm OS, and Android. Or you may just have multiple views for the same content within a single application. These demands gave rise to the headless CMS, a tool that turns your content into a cloud-based API so it can be accessed from any application. Today, a content platform is a critical layer of the modern tech stack, where it serves as a single source of truth for your brand. And because it's completely decoupled from your application code and user database, you can take it with you anywhere. In addition, it gives you the ability to model and custom tailor your content for any situation. Rather than start from a cookie cutter solution, you can build your own schema with different fields for things like text and images, and create relationships between items like you might in a relational database. It's a win for marketers because they have a single polished interface for managing content, but it's an even bigger win for us developers because we can now query content from any code base in a consistent and structured way. One tool that makes that possible is Sanity, a popular choice for Jamstack applications, which stands for JavaScript, APIs, and Markup. Sanity is part of the A in the Jamstack. It provides an open source studio where you can model your content with JavaScript and manage it in the browser. Meanwhile, the actual data is stored in the cloud in what's known as a content lake, which can then be queried from a front-end application quickly with its built-in CDN, while supporting features like GraphQL, webhooks, and real-time updates. This has been Content Platforms in 100 Seconds, but stay tuned because today I've invited Cap from Sanity to take us beyond 100 seconds and show us exactly how a content platform can fit into our tech stack. Thank you so much for that intro. Aloha everyone, my name is Cap and I do developer relations at Sanity.io. So Sanity is a platform for structured content. As a content platform, Sanity helps you manage and deliver your content in ways you may have not thought possible. If you're thinking of adding a content platform to your project, look no further than this fully customizable Sanity product, product I'm about to show you. So content can be a lot of different things. It can be the content for a blog or a portfolio. It could be the video content on a course platform. It could be the menu and the hours and the address of a restaurant. It could be a car manufacturer's content and the number of cars that were made in a quarter, how many were sent out, and how many were purchased. It could be the music tracks for a singer and they're trying to get their name out in the world so they want to save it all in one spot. It could be the times and winners for each sporting event and a major tournament. You get the picture. Content is everywhere. And we can find it all online within a couple of seconds. So with most projects, content is going to be present. It's best to manage it and know where your content is going from the beginning. Incorporating a content platform saves you time in the long run. But there are many other benefits too, and let me tell you about those. So a content platform should allow you freedom with your content. One of the biggest reasons why most developers or content creators hesitate to incorporate a content platform is that there's this fear of losing true ownership to your content, to your stuff. A content platform should not steal ownership. It should allow you to own it. Of course, it's yours. It should allow you to deliver your content however and wherever you need it to go. It should also allow you to structure and manage it however it best fits your needs. So let me show you how with Sanity you can accomplish all of those things. Built with React, there is a Sanity.io backend UI for the content called Sanity Studio. The studio is fully customizable. You structure your content or your data however you need. And because it's built with React, if you know React, you can code it up to be however you want it to look. And then there's a nifty thing called portable text. Portable text is storing your rich text in JSON format. That JSON format can be reused everywhere. Mobile, desktop, a different front end, etc. More on that in a little. So we should be treating our content as data. And because our content is data, we want to treat it as such. So wherever you need your data to go or do with Sanity, the possibilities are nearly endless. Using Sanity allows for full customization of how your structured content looks for editors, developers, anyone manipulating the content. It also allows for the ability to reshape and present your content in any format. So using Sanity and the content lake, you now have a real time database that gives you access to your content however and wherever you need. 
You know how you redesign your website every couple of months just because? Or you want to try that new framework with structured content? You can redesign. You can try a new framework at any time. So go ahead, use that new JavaScript framework and continue using your content like you've been doing. So let me show you how with Sanity.io to get a project up and running in just a few minutes. Remember, what I show you today can be used on any front end. I'll show you how to spin up a project and also a couple other cool things to get you going right out of the box. So let's go ahead and let's structure our content. All right, so to get started, go to Sanity.io. Here we're going to find these two buttons, get started, get started, click on either one of these. So once we click on that, we'll see official starters. You can choose one of these, but we're actually going to do this NPM install. So we're going to be installing globally the Sanity CLI, and we're going to be running the command Sanity init. That will start our very own Sanity project. So what I did is I copied that command, and I now went to my terminal, and in my terminal, I'm going to paste that command in, hit enter, and then it will install the CLI for me, and it will initialize a brand new project. If you have not logged in using Sanity on your local computer, you will be prompted, you may be prompted to log in using either Google, GitHub, or email password. Choose one of those. Remember what you choose because we're going to need that in the future. So I'm going to create new project. I'll hit enter, and we're going to name our project. So this is whatever you want it to be named, whatever you want your Sanity project to be named. I'm going to name it Fireship. So I'm going to hit enter. And then we are going to be asked about the data set. So we are going to be using the default data set. So I'm just going to hit Y for yes. It will be called production. So we're going to want that. Is that path correct? It is. So I'm going to hit enter. Now we can choose from movie, e-commerce, blog, or clean project. We are going to do blog for this one. The other ones have like, uh, so they'll have like pre-built pre schemas with um, some data in it. The blog one is a pre-built schema with no data in it. And then the clean one, of course, has nothing. So you would just build your own schemas out. With this one, we don't want any pre-built data. We just want pre-built schemas. And it is done. All right, so we're going to CD into our project. And now we are in it. We can run other either Sanity Docs, Manage, Help, any of those. But we actually want to open this up in our text editor of choice. So I'm going to actually open it in VS Code. There's a shortcut that I have installed, code space period. If you have that, use that. If not, go to your VS Code or text editor and open yours up. Now I'm going to make this big. All right, so let's go through a little bit of this file structure. So the sanity.json, if we go here, we actually can find our project ID and the name of it. So we named it Fireship. We have that. This project ID is what you will need if you need something else to speak to your content lake. So say you have your React front end or your Next.js front end and you want it to speak to this data set, then you will need this project ID. So that is an easy way to find it. Now, I also want to point out the schemas folder. In here, if we did the clean project when we were answer answering those questions, this would pretty much be empty. Just a couple things would be in here. But like author, category, post, those would not be here. Now, if we went to schema.js, here's where we import and use all of our different schema files. So we have block content, category, post, author, that also matches up with all these over here. And then down here is when we use it. So we import it and then use it. If you make a new file, make sure you come in here and import and use. Now I'm gonna go to post. This is our document type. Now, Sanity uses schema types, and in schema types, document is one of them. There's also string, slug, reference, image, and we'll go through a couple of these, and I'll show you what they look like. This one is a, our document type post, and it has an array of fields. So there's title, there's slug, but let me actually just show you what this looks like on the browser side, on the Sanity Studio front end side, the UI side of it. So I'm going to open up my uh, terminal. I used control tilde to open it up within VS Code. You can open it up however you want. And I'm going to run the command sanity start. So run that command, hit enter, and it's starting up our studio. And it will live at localhost 3333. So it's ready. Let's go back to our browser. 
localhost 3333. And here, remember, whatever you chose when you did the login at the beginning, choose here. So I'm going to do Google, and I am now authorized. So because it is mine, I have authorization to it. If you want to give someone else authorization to it, go to manage.sanity.io, and you can add more users. So this is what our studio looks like. It has the name. You can search through your content, desk, vision. We'll get to the vision plugin in a little bit. But here are our three document types. So post, nothing. Let's actually add a new post. So let's do my first blog post. We will generate a slug. Author is, let me pull this down. Author is a reference. It's referencing this author document. So before we actually can see anything in this dropdown, we need to go make an author. So we can leave all this here. I'm gonna go back to content, click on author, and let's make, so I'm gonna click on this little pencil. I'm going to make a new author. We'll just do my name, generate, and I am cap, <laughs> and then publish that. Awesome, so now that's published, let's go back to our post, back to the one that we were working on. And if I do the drop down, we now see the author I just made. If we had a picture, if I had added a picture to that, this would be the little thumbnail of that picture. Then we have main image, and let's add an, a main image. Then we have categories, publish at, and body. So with main image, let me actually make this a, just a little bit smaller. Main image, there are three ways to upload a main image. You can click on upload and it will bring down the file structure, like the files from your own computer. You can drop in an image, so just like drag and drop, or you can paste in an image and we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna go to Unsplash and let's look up um, cats. We'll do this cat with the butterfly. So we're gonna copy image, go back here and I'm gonna do Command V to paste it in and now we have our cat and butterfly image. And there we go. Now let me show you a really cool thing about sanity and images. So I just unzoomed this a little bit more because I need to show you everything that's going on. But if I click on edit details, in here I have some views of my image. So this is a really cool thing about sanity is I upload once and it will work for all of these aspect ratios. I can crop here, and this is the crop, and I can do hotspot. Now hotspot is making sure, and let me actually show you the thumbnail as I'm doing it. So hotspot is making sure that whatever is in this hotspot is always in view, no matter what type of aspect ratio my image is. So if I wanna make sure that the cat's ear is always in view, notice how the panorama changed or if I want the cat's nose always in view, notice how it's changing. So I don't have to do um, like multiple uploads to make sure that my that my crop is good, that my hotspot's always on. Sanity will make sure that this spot that your hotspot is on is always in view. And that's how that works. So then you just exit out and there's my hotspot and crop for my image. So here's the body of my first blog post. Now, this is the rich text editor, and in here will live our portable text. Here is the body of my blog post. I hope you like it, old fashioned smiley face. And so here is our portable text. Portable text will live in this rich text editor, and this is the sanity way of storing our rich text. So you know how when you get HTML and you wanna put it into React application, it kind of isn't very intuitive because you have to do the dangerously set prop and then you kind of lose control of it. So because portable text is data, it becomes JSON. And so you can actually put it into your React application. It makes it more intuitive as you pass it along to mobile, to desktop, to React, to view. If you wanna use a native app and you're using HTML, it would be harder, JSON, would make it easier. And this is saved as a JSON format. 
So this means that you can now query for your content. So say you wanted to find out all the blog posts that had code blocks in it. You can do that because all of this is stored as data. Your content is your data. And that is portable text. Now, let me actually show you. So here's our first blog post. Let's publish it. Let me actually show you the inspect to our blog post. If you click on those three dots, click on inspect. Here is all of the JSON of our blog post. We have our main image, we have the title, we have all of our rich text. So that is how it looks, that's how it's stored, and this is how we can query for it, things like this. All right, so let me show you a really cool feature about main image. I know we already had hotspot and crop, but let me show you another thing. So if I go to my vision plugin, wait, before I do that, I actually have to go to the three dots, inspect, and I need to find my main image reference. This is the ID to my image. So I'm gonna copy that. So under my main image, the asset ref, I'm gonna come to my vision plugin. Now the vision plugin, this is where we can query for our own content. We're gonna use Grok today. You can use either GraphQL or Grok with Sanity. Grok is an in-house Sanity made query language and I will show you how it's done just a little bit. There are definitely more places that you can learn about Grok. Um, but yeah, let me start off. So by doing the asterisks, I am grabbing all of my content link. I'm gonna do the square brackets to filter down. So I'm gonna do underscore ID is equal to, and I'm gonna paste in the ID that I grabbed from the image. Okay, now I'm gonna run that query. And in here, this is all of the content we get back from that image. So created at, the ID of it, the ID will match what we just had over here, the type, but I really wanna point this part out. So under the metadata, we get dimensions, but we also get the palette. This palette is pretty awesome. In here we get our dark muted, dark vibrant, light vibrant, muted, all of the colors that are a part of this image and a optimal foreground color for it. So dark vibrant takes up 1.93 of the image this is the color, and this would be a good foreground color for it. So if you put text over this part of the image, um, it would be really great for accessibility, this color for the text. Let's look at light vibrant. So it takes up that much of the image, this is the color, and this would be a good foreground color. So that's just a really awesome thing to, to note that you can have, that you have this at your fingertips with all the images. So you can find that, go to your vision plug, plugin, query for that ID and you have all of this at your fingertips. So really great. Okay, so let's actually add a couple things to our studio. So we have what it comes with, but let's add a couple things. So I'm gonna go back to my code and under title within the post.js file in the schemas folder, let's go underneath here and type in description and we'll do uh, keep Titles, short and sweet. Let's do a smiley face. Save that. And if we go back, keep titles short and sweet. So it's just a quick little description that you can have and you can start customizing your studio. But let's create a whole new schema type. So if we go to the schema types in the docs for Sanity, we will find an entire list of all of the schema types that we can use. So we've been working in document, We've done the string, we have done image. Let's add a number. So if we go to number, this is what it will look like. And there's the properties, there's options, and then, and validation. But here's what we need for our schema. So I'm gonna copy that, take it over. Let's do it right after the, the slug. Add a comma to separate those objects and let's change the title so we just need the title name and type for our new schema type so title will do time time to read that is the title that will live within our studio so this is the title this is the title the name is the name of the field time to read type will keep as number i'm going to save that come back here and now we have a brand new time to read. Notice how these little arrows come up. 
I could add that way or I could edit this way. So let's actually add a validation. Let's make sure that you can't do longer than 20 minutes time to read, okay? So I'm gonna come up here and these are all the different types of validations we can do. Required, min number, less than. Let's learn more about validation. And if we come down here, we want this line. So validation, and I'll actually just go just to required because we want required. I'm gonna copy that line, go back to my number and paste that in. And then let's also add the less than 20. So no matter what, we can't make the number go above 20, otherwise we'll get a warning. Come back here, and last number we put in was 88, and sure enough, it's giving us an error, it must be less than 20. So no matter what, if we just keep going down until we get it below 20, it's not gonna be happy with us. 19, and if I go up, error again. So if you want 20 to be included, then we would change this to 21. And we don't get that error, but the moment we go, to go up, we get that error again. So that is a validation rule to make sure that it stays within the numbers that you want. All right, so now that that's all done, let's publish that and let's get our Sanity Studio deployed. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our code and in here, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna create a new one and we need to run the command Sanity Deploy. Hit enter. Now studio host name, this is now unique. So when you created the project with me, you could have used the name Fireship alongside me because that's local, but this one is unique. I am gonna use the name Fireship, see if that's available. And it looks like it is, cause it's not giving me an error. So now Fireship is now taken, so you can't use that. And by the time you're watching this, maybe Fireship 1 and Fireship 2 are also taken. So it has to be unique. And once it is done, my studio will now live at fireship.sanity.studio. And I will, have val I will have authorization to view it. And anyone else I give authorization can view it. So there's my new URL. Come back here, fireship.sanity.studio. And here is my newly deployed studio with all my stuff, first blog post, everything that I have. Now let me show you a really cool thing. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit, pull this one out, and now I have my local one version, my local version running, and I have my deployed version running. Now these two are the same studio, but watch this. So anything I do in my local version shows up in my deployed version. Anything I do in my deployed version shows up in my local version. And if I do anything, you can see these little pencils show up on both sides. If I click on that little pencil, it will show what has happened and we can see who made that change. And if I come over here, click on review changes, we can revert that change from either side. Revert that change, we don't want it and it disappears. So that is live preview insanity to see both the local side and the deployed side working together live. And if I publish, it will be published on both sides. And yeah, and that is how you build your first project with sanity.io. All right, so we have our own content link up and running that we can query against. We have the JSON for all of our content and the content can be used across all platforms. We're not limited to anything. So thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions about content platforms or about sanity, you can find me on Twitter at Kapehe underscore OK, or you can find an entire Sanity Slack community at slack.sanity.io. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.